Now what I'm looking for in this video is the perfect addition to my 1650 kit lens, not a replacement. What I want is bokeh, aka background blur, to clearly separate a subject, predominantly myself, from the background while filming. Now this is what you're getting from the 1650 kit lens at 16mm using its lowest possible f-stop value, which in this case is 3.5. And if you compare it to the shot from before using my SA+, Plus, there's already more background blur happening. Usually though, a lower f-stop value corresponds with a higher millimeter lens. Like for example the f2 30mm combination that the pancake lens you're looking at right now is offering you. I am going to compare three lenses with the 1650 kit lens in four scenarios. The lenses are the 16mm f2.4, the 20 20mm f2.8 and the 30mm f2. The scenarios are a fixed distance selfie shot, a studio shot with a close background, an outside shot with a far background and a behind the camera shot to test each lens's close limit. What you're looking at right here is the kit lens at 16mm wide open at f3.5. Already a bit of bokeh, overall nice shot for vlogging. So here's the comparison to the 16mm f2.4 prime lens on the right side. Now to be able to compare bokeh, let's freeze frame this and let's zoom in to really check how much more bokeh we get. And as you can see in this comparison, it's not a lot. It's really little actually. Now here's the side by side comparison of the whole images and I'd be hard pressed to call that a difference at all. Technically it is, but it's basically not noticeable. Now here's what the 20mm prime at f2.8 can do for us. Less viewing angle, more bokeh, definitely a difference, definitely noticeable, but overall too narrow for vlogging in my opinion. So let's compare it to the 16mm kit lens at f3.5. Once again, let's freeze frame this and let's zoom in to see how much more bokeh we get. This time it's a noticeable difference. The kit lens, when used with a selfie stick, like in this example, is decently wide for vlogging, but the 20mm prime lens I think is too narrow. Obviously it's not gonna get better when using the 30mm, so here's what you're getting from this lens. And it's a lot of bokeh, but also much too close for vlogging. Here's the freeze frame and the zoom in, and that's the difference in bokeh you'll get. Side by side comparisons really illustrates the point. This is not a vlogging lens. Let's wrap this section up with an overview. Top left, 16mm kit lens at f3.5. Top right, 16mm prime at f2.4. Bottom left, 20mm at f2.8. Bottom right, 30mm at f2. The clear winner actually is the kit lens. So here's the overview of an outside shot with a far background. Top left corner, that's the 1650 kit lens at 16mm at f3.5. Top right corner, that's the 16mm prime at f2.4. Lower left corner, that's the 20mm f2.8. And lower right corner, that's the 30mm at f2. Always at approximately a distance of 2 feet. Now comparing the kit lens at 16mm to the 16mm f2.4 prime, there is a difference in bokeh, but not enough to justify spending money on it. Now here's the comparison with the 20mm f2.8 and this time we can see a real difference. Of course, 20mm means less viewing angle, but we're getting a lot more bokeh and a quite nice one at that. Quick side by side, 16mm kit lens wide open on the left, 20mm at f2.8 on the right. A little less spherical distortion, much more bokeh, less viewing angle, so already we're getting a different feel. Jumping to 4 feet with the 20mm at f2.8, essentially doubling the distance of the 16mm on the left side, in which case we're getting about the same result when it comes to bokeh. So basically the 20mm prime at f2.8 allows you to be approximately twice as far away from the camera and still get the same results when it comes to bokeh compared to the 16mm kit lens wide open at half the distance. Approximately triple the distance and again we have less bokeh when compared to the kit lens. Next side by side comparison this time with the 30mm at f2. Much less viewing angle, but also much more bokeh. Now as you can see on the example on the right side, using an f2 at 30mm, there's really not a lot of depth of field to work with. If your face is in focus, your ears are already out of it. Of course, with this much bokeh at our service, we can step further away from the camera. This comparison shows 2 feet distance with the kit lens compared to 4 feet distance with the 30mm f2. It's approximately the same framing, but still we're getting much more bokeh and this time noticeably less spherical distortion. And this time, even if we effectively triple the distance 
distance to 6 feet on the right side, we're still getting more bokeh with the 30mm f2. Also, there's no spherical distortion, which I think is a really nice look. Final comparison for the outside shot with a far background. Top left, 16mm kit lens wide open, 2 feet distance. Top right, 30mm f2 at 2 feet. Bottom left, 30mm f2 at 4 feet. Bottom right, 30mm f2 at 6 feet. Once again, comparing the kit lens wide open on the left side to the 16mm prime at f2.4 on the right side. A slight edge when it comes to bokeh for the prime lens, but not as much as we would like. So here's another side by side, and as you can see, when it comes to bokeh, it's very close to being <laughs> basically the same image. Here's the comparison with the 20mm at f2.8. I tried to get approximately the same framing, so on the right side the background is closer and there's more bokeh of course. Another side-by-side -side comparison of the whole images and I think it's not a flattering comparison for the 20mm prime, because the kit lens already gives me a decent image with some bokeh in there. So when I spend extra cash on an extra lens, I expect that lens to have much more of an effect when it comes to visual aesthetics than what the 20mm can give me. So once again, to really make a difference, we have to bring in the 30mm at f2. And in the example on the right side, once again, you can see that the background is much closer and there's much more bokeh, while maintaining at least vaguely the same framing. So this is exactly the kind of difference when it comes to visual aesthetics that I want a lens to bring to the table if it wants to be regarded as a viable option for an extra lens that I spend extra money on. It really is different from anything that I can do with a kit lens, so it really does enrich my arsenal. Once again, wrapping up this part of the video with an overview, top left 16mm kit lens at f3.5, top right 16mm prime at f2.4, bottom left 20mm at f2.8 and bottom right 30mm at f2 which in my opinion is the clear winner. Top left, the split screen, that's the kit lens, 16mm f3.5 and 50mm f5.6. Top right, 16mm f2.4, bottom left, 20mm f2.8, bottom right, 30mm f2. Now there's a couple of things to note. For starters, if you compare the kit lens at 16mm wide open with the 16mm prime f2.4, you can see that you can get a little closer with the kit lens, but that as far as bokeh is concerned, both these lenses are pretty much the same. A similar result presents itself when comparing the 20mm f2.8 on the left with the 30mm f2 on the right. Although the 20mm f2.8 is slower than the 30mm f2, because we can be closer to the object, the results in terms of bokeh are, once again, pretty much the same. Funny enough, the winner of this comparison is the kit lens at 50mm using the slowest f-stop of the whole comparison, which is an f5.6. Technically, you're gonna be the furthest distance from the object, but the 50mm focal length more than compensates for the larger close limit, giving you the most close-up shot out of this comparison and decent bokeh. So if close-up shots are very important to you, either stick with the kit lens, go to 50mm and be okay with the fact that you might be a little further away from the object, or if you're still looking to get a prime to be able to be a little closer, the 20mm f2.8 will give you the best results. A second option to get even closer is utilizing the 4K video mode, but exporting your video to 1080p. This will allow you to crop into the image by a factor of 1.5, which essentially is a 1.5x magnification. If logging is your thing, the only lens that could be considered a viable option is the 16mm f2.4, but I advise against investing in that lens because the gains in background blur are too minimal to justify paying money for that. Just stick with the kit lens. Now if you're mainly interested in getting the most bokeh out of stationary shots, be it outside or in a studio-like environment, both the 20mm f2.8 and the 30mm f2 would be an option. Then again, if bokeh is what you're after, I say go all the way and get the 30mm f2. It's gonna get you the better results. And as far as close-up shots or the close limit is concerned, in my opinion the kit lens at 50mm clearly takes it home. Now to wrap this up, in order to add extra bokeh to my arsenal, in my opinion the best addition to my kit lens out of all the primes that I've tested is the 30mm f2. So if you liked the video, if you found it helpful, please make sure to leave a thumbs up, it's greatly appreciated. Any kind of comment or feedback is welcome and I'll try to answer as quickly as possible. All the tech that I've used in this video is linked in the video description. As always, thank you so much for your time, 
Thank you for watching and hopefully see you again soon.